Welcome back everyone. Today I'm excited to kick off a new series where I break down and define common photography terms that you often hear but might not fully understand. This series aims to help you grasp these concepts and use them effectively in your photography. So let's get into our first topic, the inverse square law. Understanding the inverse square law can significantly improve your lighting techniques and overall image quality. The inverse square law states that the intensity of the light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, what the hell did he just say? Don't worry, you are not alone. It's really quite simple. As you move your light source further away from your subject, the light intensity decreases dramatically. For example, if you double the distance of your light from your subject, the light intensity doesn't just have it actually reduces to one quarter of its original intensity, which is two stops darker. The easy to remember rule of thumb is double the distance, quarter the light, and have the distance, quadruple the light. This rapid light fall off is crucial to understand when you're setting up your lighting, whether you're in a studio or on location. Let's talk about what this means in practical terms for your photography. The inverse square law helps you control how quickly the light falls off from your subject to the background. If you want a dramatically lit portrait with a well-lit subject and a dark background, place your light source close to your subject. The light will fall off quickly, leaving the background in relative darkness. If the background is still too bright, move your subject and your light further away from the background. On the other hand, if you want a bright background and it's too dark, consider moving your subject and your light source closer to the backdrop. In some instances, you may still need to light your background with more lights, and I'll link to a video that's all about lighting backdrops. If you find yourself in a scenario where your light at minimum power is too bright, just move it backwards. If you ever find yourself in a situation where your light is not bright enough at maximum power, try moving it closer which not only increases the light's intensity, but it also softens the light because the larger the light source looks to your subject, the softer it will be. To illustrate the inverse square law, let's do a quick demonstration. First, we'll place the light with a bare bulb perpendicular to our backdrop and photograph it to show you the rate of fall off. This will give you a clear visual of how light intensity decreases with distance. Every time we double the distance from the light, we lose three quarters of the light volume. The key takeaway here is that light falls off fast, and as you get further away, there is less of a difference in brightness as you go from, let's say, seven feet to eight feet away from the light source. Let's break this down a little bit more. We'll start with the light source one meter or about three feet from the subject. I know it's not really three feet, but just go with it. Notice how the subject is well lit and the background falls into darkness quickly. Now let's move the light source two meters away. It's going to be one quarter as bright, so we'll increase our ISO two stops to compensate. Observe how the light on the background starts to become brighter. This happens because there is less of a difference between the distance from the light to the subject and the light and the background. Finally, we'll move the light source four meters or about 12 feet away. And once again, we'll increase our ISO by two stops to compensate for our light becoming dimmer on the subject. At this point, the light on the subject and background are almost the same. And that's because those distances are pretty similar. Now let's demonstrate how the inverse square law affects a close up portrait. We'll start with the light source very close to the subject's face. Notice how the light falls off quickly, creating a dramatic hotspot that falls off into darkness. Next, we'll move the light source further away from the subject and observe how the light becomes more even across their face. Now, I would encourage you to take a moment to repeat my experiments using different light to subject distances so that you can see for yourself how light fall off changes and how it affects your images. I promise that this hands-on practice will help you internalize and remember the concept. Understanding and applying the inverse square law can dramatically improve your lighting setups and overall photography. By mastering this principle, you'll have greater control over light fall off, intensity, and the mood of your images. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and sign up for the bell. Consider sending a super thanks below to support me to make more videos like this one. 
Also, please suggest future topics for this series in the comments and check out my online members only learning platform, The Academy with John Gress. Thank you so much for your time. Have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you soon.